everyone. Welcome back into my studio for another workshop this. I'm Robin McClendon and today I thought we would have fun working with good old fashioned acrylic paint and this this tulip paint. It's a dimensional fabric paint but I love it for making marks on the gel plate to then create beautiful decorative background papers because you know my thing is creating our own decorative papers that we can use in our collaging in our in our paintings um, if you do applied application for that I use it in my book in my journaling there's so many applications for making our own papers versus going out and purchasing the ones that are you know created en masse in the various hobby shops and stuff like that and I just think it just personalizes your work and it's just uber easy and so much fun to make your own papers so this tulip paint is like five dollars a bottle I have it in the white and the black it comes in all colors um, and you take this kind of crazy little craft paint and you can make some really sophisticated patterns so let's get going I'm gonna start off I'm gonna do two pulls I'm gonna do a cream background this is master's touch paint um, you can get it at Hobby Lobby Woo, that one was difficult to open okay so we're just gonna put a bit down brayer it out just to get a nice smooth layer we're just pulling our first print just a background <clears throat> So you just could make a ton of backgrounds, which is what I oftentimes do. I just, I'll ink up a lot of backgrounds and then I'll come back and um, then begin to do a lot of different techniques on them. And that way I can vary my techniques. Like I could do some <clears throat> with this paint, I can do mark making, I can use my Posca, I can use my Sumi inks, I can use alcohol inks. You know, at that point, I have my backgrounds in place. I can use Patty's um, <clears throat> stains. You know, you can just have all different type of techniques that I've been showing you um, once you have all your backgrounds ready to go. Okay, so this is a good one. This is a nice cream one. And of course, I had some stuff on my plate, so it's nice just to pick up some extra bits it just gives um you know a nice interest to the the overall finished piece it doesn't look like this flat you know one color one tone type of print you get all these little you know sort of yummy pieces in there and it just adds to the complexity of what you're doing so this is Payne's gray the first color was milky white in the master's touch and this is Payne's gray. So put another piece down and and I just took one of you know the pieces of our sketch paper that you know I love using and I just tore it in half just so that I could get a couple of quick pulls for this video. As you know, I really just like to tackle one technique in these videos. Okay, so that's good. So we have these two. So now with um, these two backgrounds, one creamy, white, and one black, then, you know, just we're just gonna do the opposite. So it gives a couple of times to show you a few techniques. So the first one, let's just do the black because we'll go with the with the cream one first. And what's kind of cool is just to kind of create, just kind of do, it comes out really fine, which is nice. I'm just kind of doing a pattern like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it, just kind of make a, kind of like a repeat with it a little bit. just really light we don't want the whole plate brayered out and we're just going to grab this section right there and so what this is going to do is going to give us a nice overall and um it kind it holds up because it's kind of dimensional a little bit it holds up to being able to kind of keep its shape i'm 
And you could layer as many colors, you know, you, things, they just layer nicely over and over again, so. Oh yes, look at that, ugh. Amazing, right? It just looks right off just like a monoprint, like you just kind of purposely designed that particular background. So I love it. And it, it holds up against the acrylic background because it is a different texture, but it's still, it's still flat. And um, it's just a really neat paint to be so inexpensive. So we love that one. That's already a great start to um, what we're doing. So now let's go and take the white. And um, you can do a little scripting for those of you who follow my scripting, the intuitive scripting. Um, or any kind of mark making so let's just get this going just kind of get it unplugged okay and because it does a nice fine line you can really you can draw you can paint with it so just and it doesn't dry fast that's the nice thing about it because it is dimensional so It'll stay um, nice and moist, and it'll give you a chance to finish this process. I like things that go off the plate a little bit, since I'm making this a little, you know, um, since I'm working on a piece of paper smaller than the plate size. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay this down, and it's, it will smush. Um, which is nice because it gives you a background pattern that then you could go and continue to work on top of um, by adding other images. But for me, I just love making these as starting points for collage fodder. I just think it's so easy and uh, just beautiful. And here we are. I mean, look at that. It's just brilliant. You, it's just, you just get this really, really high quality print and line in, as a mono print that you would be working forever with, with, with mono printing inks and what have you to accomplish the same thing. And, and regular acrylics don't seem to do the same thing either because it's the body that this, it says a dimensional fabric paint. So it has a little body that holds up and um, you just get these really neat impressions. So you could see these two would just work really beautifully together in a collage or something like that, but definitely just as wonderful background paper to begin with. So there you have it. You could also, just real quick, I'll show you. Why not? You got a little extra time. Um, you can also just take, um, we'll just take a full sheet here and without putting a background down, you could literally just, I'm going to leave that on the plate because that's going to give me a little extra tension. And then let's get the black And just literally, you can just kind of draw your line, kind of, you know, get what you want because you can see it holds the, the form. Okay, a little extra white in places. And then we'll put this down. We'll sheet down. And then you want to start off by gently pressing it because it'll slide around a little bit because I've got a, quite a bit down there. And if you don't want the line to be completely smushed, so for this first one, we'll pull two because there's enough on here to get a ghost print. But I'm not going to bear down on this hard because I just want to get this really light impression, which is just super cool. And you can see the the white against black there play that I like. And then we can come back with, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick this up in sections. I'm gonna kinda use my patchwork te technique. And then I'm gonna really press down on this. 
because now it's, you know, it's enough that we can absorb into the plate, I mean, into the paper. And we'll get a, a different mark. Oh, just nice. And then these are ready to be able to, um, you could do coffee staining. I love my coffee staining. So I would come back and with these papers, just stain them even further to get this really cool background. The other thing that I like to do when I have extra paint laying there, I'll lay one on top of the other. Let's put this here. Just to kind of move the patterns around a little bit. And it'll, it'll pick up. See, I'm picking up some of this and um, it distorts the pattern but I think it makes it more interesting as background and this would be a starting point for me continuing to either use the Posca pen and you know go into this when it's dry and make additional marks you can stain it I mean, there's so much you can do just simply putting this down on a plate and um, pulling them and just having these great surfaces to begin your mark making journey. So we have these, they're all done and just with some acrylic you already have and a $5 bottle of this Tulip called Tulip Slick Dimensional Fabric Paint. And I'll try to have some links for it below the video. There you have it. Once again, thanks for hanging out with me. Hope you enjoyed this little quick technique. And um, please comment below, ask any questions. Also, any com anything that you would like to see me do in the future, please let me know. And I will work it into this workshop, this schedule. Alrighty, take care, happy creating in your studios. Bye-bye.